Well, it brings a number of associations, I think, like, on the basis, like, if I'm not thinking of the personal experience, like, free improvisation for me is usually the tradition. Mostly I associate it with the tradition of free jazz being imported to, to Europe. That's usually how I think about it. But um, it's just that. It's just the, the connection of words. Like, on a personal basis, in regards to my work, of course, it's a thing that it's highly influential and um, the connection of words that actually have a meaning and an idea, but I'm not even sure if, if it's something that I'm actually playing, for instance, like, if we can relate to that idea, right? So, in the end of the day, it's a very subtle definition of a genre. So it's something that it's not 100% defined, of course, but I do associate it with, at least with a beginning, more than to an end, but I do associate it with a beginning. I, I kind of got into improv as a, because of a very pragmatic, pragmatic aspect of improvising. Um, the first time I, I, I didn't start with the saxophone, so that's always the thing. I started with another instrument, so I started playing with guitars, playing with acoustic guitars and electric guitars. That got me into pedals, into feedbacks, into distortions and all that kind of thing, which ev eventually got me to electronics, which was the thing I was really into at the time, dance music, electronic music. My first gig was at 19, but I still didn't have samplers at the time. I was, I was just playing electric guitar and uh, pedals. And uh, it was actually improv, an improv gig with a VGO, so so yeah it was it was a very pragmatic thing that got me into it because um when i started playing i was probably like 16 or something like that and i started having like my first high school band you know, that kind of thing teenage band at least and it was with gabriel gabriel ferrandini so when we were playing as, as young kids and we had all these ideas exploding in our heads like eclectic music eclectic tastes for instance and, and we wanted to play a lot of different stuff but then uh, and we were really interested in jazz, also the languages of jazz, mainly because of the possibilities of uh, instrument control. But um, when we started, like actually started trying to do it, it was very complicated, it was very hard. And when, so eventually we started developing like tricks in a sense, or uh, trying to find, um, well, this works, this doesn't work, you know, like, oh, feedback can be a thing, can be a, this sound can be a thing, um, the noise of a door hitting can be a thing. So we were all like, it was a very, you know, that very uh, naive time of finding things out. But that really got me into this whole possibilities of, uh, because I was also trying to make electronic music at the time in my computer and the, the, those kind of things. And I very quickly got bored because of the lack of interaction with other human beings. So... For me, it was a quick way of making music because you don't really need to write songs or to just like enter this kind of like fixed jam with a tempo and that kind of stuff. So it was a way to make music that stimulated me and that I felt that I had possibilities of bringing all the things that I enjoyed into one big melting pot. And uh, I didn't feel that the guitar sometimes was a good um, fit for some of those things. I, I simply didn't enjoy the sound that was being produced, either with pedals, either clean, either, you know, it, it simply wasn't going there. It's a personal thing, it's a subjective thing, there's nothing really right or wrong with these, with these things, but uh, I was really into the music that Clean Feed was promoting, for instance, in Scandinavian scene, European improv, free improv scene, the English scene, all that, and, um, which has, um, of course, that exploration, sound exploration, instrument exploration, uh, extended techniques, whatever you want to call them, are a big part of the integration of a, a language and, and a sound. So uh, for me, when I, once I, I saw a gig with John Butcher, and I think that that was probably one of the turning points in my life. And when I saw this John Butcher gig, it was a gig in CCB a few years ago, quite a few years ago. And it was with, uh, I think it was uh, Rodrigo Mad that organized, uh, organized the, the event. But it was John Butcher, uh, Gunther Muller, if I'm not mistaken, and Carlos Zinger. 
and for me it was a very eye-opening ear-opening gig especially because of John Butcher I, I was completely amazed I've never had never seen him before I've heard of him before but um, I'd never cared much until that moment when he was still a kid but um what he did there for me was if it kind of put me in the the feeling that I, I was very ridiculous in a sense that I was like I, all these sounds and all these things that I'm trying to make and all these stupid things and I need amplifiers and I need cables and I need new strings and I, I need electricity and I, it just didn't felt I can do it all with this one instrument so it didn't feel very practical basically so in the end of the day I felt like I should change the instrument because I think that I might have more possibilities of expressing myself in a way that I feel more complete and with an instrument that I feel that I can uh, traverse or diagonally cross more things and genres and sounds that I feel more interested in. Well, I think we all come down, it all usually comes down, of course, idealism, but with a mixture of pragmatism, which is always a thing, especially in, in genres, in this case, which are very niche. So the, the availability of musicians is, of course, scarce. So um, there's always that question of pragmatic, like if I wanted to choose a double bass, how many double basses are there, actually? I think, that all, of course, always the big motivation, for me at least, people have to be in the same tuning, in somewhat the same tuning. They have to get along relatively. And... Um, but we have to kind of point in a general same direction. This is the way I've, I've been thinking about it very recently, like throughout these last years, like why this music, not this music. And I always feel that this music, the, the musician that I, that I think of, that I choose, whatever, that happens to be playing with me, we have to have this kind of understanding. And that understanding comes from a general sense of aesthetic, of course. And it comes from some vague or less vague sense of tradition and knowledge of the music that we're playing and what we're trying to achieve, even if we're trying to do something new or not try something new at all. But th there always has to be something there. And that is basically the essence. If we're doing free improv, not in free improv, but um, that, that's the thing. We always have to understand what the other person desires in a bit of sense it's always cool that we don't know everything of course right but but we have to understand something well i'd like certainly to see more venues throughout the country spread around that's that's a classic thing i, I would like to see more venues like lisbon has a few good venues but not that many if we start really thinking about it which still foster a lot of people and are super important, I mean, my God. But um, I would like to see more venues. Usually, that's one of the things I really desire, more open kinds of venues. Uh, of course, more musicians would still be nice, but I also would love that things were not as centralized sometimes as Lisbon. Because of course it's great that Lisbon has been gaining some traction finally, in, in some sense. Some others, it's drastic, it's uh, dramatic. But, um, of course, it's been exploding slightly more in terms of culture and all that kind of stuff, and that's great, and it's getting more ex exposition. But at the same time, I feel that uh, it's been harder than ever, for instance, to go to port and to connect with people from port. Uh, also, the city centers are changing a lot with the tourism, so if we have to talk about tourism, that's not a giant conversation which involves certain desires also, so it's a complicated matter. But that's, that's the thing, there, there are important variants that appear in Lisbon and it, they're kind of holding, some are going to close, but, um, but it, it's like in London recently, the, during the talk that we watch, that it's, it's happens in a lot of places, and a venue opens, stays open for a year, and then it closes down, so with the rent prices in Lisbon, I don't know how it's going to be in the next few years, I, can't, I can only tell. But um, 
I hope it doesn't go down to the worst of our fears and I hope we are able to contain this kind of um, cultural cultural emptying, emptiness that's being spread out through the city, you know, in the sense of it's an identity and em emptiness, more, mostly. So, you know, like the social framework of the city gets really fragile, gets kind of shattered. So if you do that, you know, like spaces are very important for these kind of things, associations and they, they become more rare and harder to maintain because of rent prices, because of lack of interest, because of lack of lo local populations. So it's, a, it's places that is, uh, uh, avoid a lot of scrutiny and that is good in a sense, you know. It's a place where you can, these places you can kind of express or they're very free, basically. It's, it's, a, it's kind of your uh, playground, you know. Sometimes I, I've played so much in ZDB, for instance, like to give an example, I've played so many times at ZDB that many times I look at ZDB's stage like a sort of playground, like I can do a lot of experiments here and I have a, a good sound technician and a programmer that believes in these things, so this is a place where I can safely do things that are out of my safe space, if that makes sense. I think it's, for me, the here and now is in Lisbon, so that's what I want to do right now.